Okay, I turned the fan off to eliminate some of the wind noise. But the battery hatch, we can just do it away from the airplane, so here we go. Because this is a larger area, I go ahead and do this with the airbrush. I even go ahead and do that front portion. Sometimes you get that gap between the front of the battery hatch and the back of the cowling. Uh, it shows white through there and it kind of breaks up your nice handiwork. The color blue kind of helps hide that fact. There you go. Battery hatch is done. We'll set that off to the side. Zoom in here a little bit on the nose. Now here's where you got to be careful about overspray because we're not masking and uh, you kind of want to get in close with the brush. And we're going to get as, as close up to the line where the aluminum is as we can and then that's where we come in with the uh, standard hand paint brush and then hit these uh, right along here and do that part. And I've got the motor all covered up. Might even help. Uh, give me a second here. I think with all the junk laying around in here I'd have it, but... There we go. A little bit of a shield. Saving the paint job on the other side. Alright, that's about as risky as we need to get. The rest of that can be done with a uh, hand brush. Okay, now we're going to go old school with a paintbrush and a bottle of paint. Now I'm going to draw with a pencil here the uh, curvature line, which is generally going to go from right here and start its curve down. And uh, that's going to be our guide. So, let's see if I can keep it on the stand and in the camera at the same time and do this. Yeah, we're there. Put the camera down just a little bit. Alright. I'll just use a straight edge. You want to do this really light. It's making a little little mark in the foam. That's okay. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. Just don't get real heavy with it. You're going to wind up putting a trench in it. <laughs> it's not good for business. Okay, we've got an angle line. I'm going to curve it right here. Try 
try it anyway. To get a nice even flow, uh, you want to come out right about here and then start coming down. All right, not too bad. I think we can live with that. The trick is getting it exactly the same on the other side. There's several different techniques I'm sure you all can come up with to make that work. Take my mighty brush. As Bill Alexander, the famous oil painter, used to say. My mighty brush. Here. Blend this up a little bit. down into panel lines. Now, some of you guys do really fancy panel lines. Uh, I haven't really figured that technique out. Somebody told me, but I didn't quite understand it, so I don't normally do them. I'm kind of glad I haven't tried, because once I figure out how to do it, I'm going to want to do it on every stinking airplane I got. I'll be down here for days. Because uh, it just looks way too cool. still on the other side of the line, so that's fine. Got a little too much paint here, so let's go ahead and finish this panel over here. Now I go ahead and fill in the groove right here. And that's my cutoff point. far back the blue should go. We're almost right in line with that now. Too much paint there. Some excess in there. Take a deep breath and hold it. <laughs> Why I do that? Breathing technique is kind of important, I guess, with painting. It's a habit that developed when I was, I think, the first model I ever built and painted was when I was probably eight years old or so. Somewhere in that time frame. It's something I always did, especially when you're using a detail brush. Getting into them small, tight areas. Doesn't look too bad. It ain't perfect. The reason I love this brush, I need to go find another one just like it for backup. Is it's thick, so I can get good coverage, but it has a nice little tip on it here too. Just a 
break. Right. Kind of keeping the edges nice and smooth. The blend is not quite there yet. We're getting there. This is the hardest part. This little curve. Now when that dries, those brush strokes will disappear. Now at this angle, it looks like there's a mess up right here, but that's actually, when you look at it from straight on the side, it is perfect, so it'll, it will do. I think, maybe I did screw that up, let's see. Yeah, let's bring this line here out just a little bit. Okay, and there you go. I don't know about y'all, but I'm pretty happy with that. It looks really bad on the camera. <laughs> Holy crap. Thin out the paint just a little bit. Clean up the brush. That's something else you're going to want to do too. Every, every few uh, strokes is clean the brush so that the paint doesn't start drying and get clumpy. That will totally screw up the paint job then you will have brush strokes. We're gonna see if we can kind of iron some of this out a little bit. And by thinning it as we go outward towards the airbrushed area. Okay. Now here it's already dry. And I did that with a brush. And when you look at it in comparison to where it's airbrushed, it looks exactly the same. This is why I say you can use a hand brush. I'm going to uh, touch up a bit of the battery hatch here too on the bottom edge. I don't know if this will be in the camera, it's not that important. Kind of come up under here. I said the battery hatch area is where you're going to get most of your uh, bad spots over a period of time, taking it on and off, and you're going to be touching it up every now and then. If you're picky like me, I absolutely hate it when I walk in the shop and see one of my blue nosers hanging up and there's a white speck on it where the paint flaked off the foam. It's very frustrating. Alright. And we'll set that off to the side and let it dry. Okay, so that gives you an idea. We don't have to film me doing the other side. It's the exact same technique, and uh, painting the rudder is just as simple as uh, basically the same thing. Now that I do with a brush. 